to Meanwhile at the Castle. I'm Queen Deborah. I'm Queen Emily. And we are Queens of Our Castles, keeping the domestic arts alive. Today is Friday, March 6th, 2020. When was the last time we recorded? It was January. Yeah, it's been two months. It's January something, beginning of January. <laughs> so it's been two months. And I think this is episode 51. Oh, good. Because I forgot to check. <laughs> so welcome to our little corner of the world where we talk about typically um, fiber arts, knitting, crochet, yarn dyeing, and then some other types of things from time to time. Mm -hmm. So um, today we are going to have finished objects. Um, we'll have a life update. A life update, finished mm -hmm. objects, work in progress, a kindness is like sugar segment, and we'll finish with shop news. Awesome. I feel proud I did Good that. Good job. One go. That was a first try. <laughs> well done. You can tell that that was you starting instead of me. <laughs> it's just been three years and I'm finally feeling a bit comfortable with this all. <laughs> I know it's been three and a half years. Yeah. Three and a half years. So that's how long it takes for me to feel comfortable with something. <laughs> so life update. Yeah, what's going on with you, Emily? We are finally healthy. We have had a bit of a brutal winter just this last month and a half or so. Um, it's just been one of those where everybody got sick multiple times and there was not a single day for six weeks that everybody in our house felt well, okay. What happened was after we recorded our last episode, mm -hmm. I went home and that night you're like, I am not feeling right. Is that what it was? And you had pneumonia. I had pneumonia. And it's been since that day, since we the day we recorded last time. Yeah. That's how long it's been. Yep. So it's been a long, long slog <laughs> through the dark and dreary depths of winter. winter. <laughs> but we're on the other side of it. Everybody feels healthy. This is our 15 in a row of everybody feels good. So that is great. Um other things that are going on, we are just starting to get rolling with Heroic Youth, which is our youth program that all of our kids are involved in and that Richard and I run and that Deborah has helped with so many, you know, and, and helped run for years. So it's a big, busy time of year, but really fun. And um, this week is spring break for my college student and he's home and... Today is Richard's birthday. So it's a good, it's a good thing. It's a good time of year. We're, we're, we're feeling happy. I don't really have anything That's kind life of me. shattering after, other than that. We've done a lot of home improvements and cleaning and organizing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. doing some decorating. Just how to do something in those months where you feel like winter is never going to end. I saw a sign at the store the other day that said, um, I'm sorry for the things I said when it was winter, <laughs> and that's me for mm -hmm. sure. On that line, I, I posted the other day that um, this is a leap year, so just remember that instead of having 28 days, this year February has 4,627 days. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so. And we are now in March, and the weather's lovely. So. I love March. Yeah, we are now in heavy ballet and mm -hmm. Shakespeare season oh, yes. in my family. So my two children, Ella and Nadia, my two younger, are both in ballet and we have a performance in the first week in June. And so they're just very busy with that. And then Nadia is in our Commonwealth Schools um, Shakespeare performance that they do each spring. And so there did are- Did we talk about that at all in our, I don't know I if think we did. We did. Three, yeah, we did. We have three days of rehearsal a week for that, mm -hmm. so that's busy, and I'm working on costumes, and I wish that I could show you, because while it's Shakespeare themed, we talked about this last time, it is also Star Wars themed, so <laughs> or not Shakespeare themed, sorry, while it's a Shakespeare play, it has a Star Wars theme, and for costumes, my job are the droids. <laughs> so, so fun. Pretty much we're building things and it's going to be really interesting. So trying to do an L337 on a person that's not See, I am a stick. not <laughs> sure who L337 is. Um, is that from The Mandalorian? 
I I honestly cannot remember. I think so. I'm not up I, like when I look at it, I'm like, yeah, I've seen that. I remember. I just don't remember. Or maybe it's which. yeah, I don't know what that one but is. But anyways, from. it's I, fun. I it's can't fun claim to be a true Star Wars nerd because I my children would be aghast at the fact that I couldn't tell you which one. They <laughs> <laughs> Mother. How dare you? Like How dare you betray us this way? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, we are planning um, a trip in a little while to Disneyland. We usually go in the fall, but this year we decided to switch and go in the spring. We started out going in the spring with our family and then schedules didn't work. So we did the fall and went each year in the fall. And It's a Small World is always closed when we go. And so I said, I want to go when it's open and like good weather. It's a small world. Who was it that posted the whole ride? It. Oh, it was Kimberly. Yeah. Thanks, Kimberly Ann. She posted know, when they so were happy. there. <laughs> not last time, but the time before. I mean, no, maybe it was last time. Anyway, she posted um, in her stories with the Going whole through. ride. And I watched the whole thing twice. So yeah, it was like, I love oh. it. <laughs> yeah, I really like it. So I'm just hoping that we, it doesn't end up happening that we have to cancel that because of things going on in the world today mm -hmm. with the coronavirus so we don't yeah. know what's going to come so i will just be prepared cheerfully flexible go. so and i hope that for those of you watching all of you are doing well yes we hope that you're all healthy and mm -hmm. if you're not healthy that you will be very soon and that everybody in your family and your circles are doing well absolutely so i know it has been a it's been a rough news cycle Rough, rough. And I say that hopefully not sounding flippant, but there's a lot going on in the world. And we're thinking about everybody affected by tornadoes and sickness and just all a of the hard things. On. So so we are thinking about you. Yes, absolutely. And we appreciate those of you that comment and, you know, check in on us and Make sure we're doing good. So yes, thank you. Yes, absolutely. And we had so many really fun comments for our last episode, too. They were <laughs> Because great. my Kindness Like Sugar segment transitioned into a terrible dream restaurant <laughs> segment. You all <laughs> have some crazy ideas. I'm just going to say. You're talking about things that are classy, that are highbrow no. and not highbrow. Things that are classy, classy. and then things that are classy. <laughs> <laughs> so. so that was really fun to read. That was a great, that was great. That was a lot of fun. All right. Well, um, I thought I would mention because we always say, oh, show notes are here. Show notes are there. Hopefully we'll get to them. Yeah. It's not going to happen. We haven't had show notes for a very long time. I'm <laughs> going to take that off of our description list yeah. down below. We try to tell you as much as we can about it, um, give you information, show pictures, put, you know. But for the most part, Google is your best friend when it comes to these things. So, And if you can't find something, we're just reach out and we're happy yeah. to help. So. Yeah. No problem there. All right. Let's move on. Let's get started. We have a lot happening. Yes. So... Yes, so we're going to start with finished objects, yes. right? Okay. I don't know what I want to start with. I know. I totally okay. know what I got to start see. with. I have to start with this. Oh, I just... Oh, she dang it. Up. Sorry. Oh. 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 Wait, hold on. Are you getting motion sick? Wait, how's that? Oh. Leave it to me. I have a pile here, and it's just right <laughs> it's next to the mountain. tripod. Okay. <laughs> I have finished a glorious sweater that I am so proud of and it is the Whitmore sweater Come by on, the illustrious <laughs> Amy Taylor S Studios. But now I can start here. putting your arm. I'm going to hold it up here but we're also going to insert a picture so you can see it. So this beautiful sweater is designed by like I said Amy of Taylor S Studios and I was super lucky to be one of her test knitters and um, this pattern is now available. She has it on Ravelry, but she also has it on her website, I believe, or is it on Etsy? It, she has it on Etsy. On Etsy. And she has it on her website. No, I think it's, I'll have to check. Yeah, I'm just pretty Etsy. sure it's on Etsy. Yeah. Um, it comes with two sleeve designs. She has the bishop sleeve, which is a big, lovely, blousey sleeve that then cinches in at the wrist and then she has a tapered sleeve and I knit the tapered sleeve and I knit this in my Austin colorway 
using classic sock and fantasy fluff, which is my mohair base. And isn't that yoke so pretty? It is, it's so pretty and super soft. And it just feels like a dream. It's gorgeous. Super well-written pattern, very inclusive sizing. Um, I think it goes, I don't remember what the exact measurements, right? Off the top of my head are, you can go look, but it goes up to a 5X. Um, and it's well designed for proportions in the larger sizes too. I feel like, um, yeah, the proportions are beautifully Yeah, rather than graded. just scaling everything up. She did it, yeah. She yeah. made sure to adjust proportions. Keep it in good proportion. I know she worked really hard on that. Yes, and it's just beautiful. So I'm very proud of it. Unfortunately, I finished it right in time for it to start to warm up and it is a very warm and toasty garment. So it will probably get a lot of wear next season. I have worn it a couple times already, but not as much as I would like, but oh, isn't that color so pretty? I don't have a problem so with meeting things for the future. Oh, me either. So, like, in the summertime, a lot of people are like, it's it's too hot to wear anymore, yeah. so I don't want to do that. Although I, think, I do get impatient, because I think, oh, oh I yeah, want to wear that. Yeah. But, but like, in the summertime, I'm happy to knit things and set them aside. and Yep. Oh, yeah. Later. I knit sweaters in the summer all the time. Because I'm too slow at making a lot of things. <laughs> I just have to always be working. Like this one. Yay! This one. It took me six months. I went back to see. It. <laughs> it took me six months to make my cardigan. It's so pretty. It is finished. Oh, Deborah, I love it. Okay. Once again, I finished this just in time for it to warm up. But this is my glamping cardigan. I'm yes. calling it because I'm I'm not a real camper. <laughs> You're. A I'm glamper. a glamper, and so I want very luxurious things to surround me when I am camping so I can feel more at home. <laughs> and so that's what the purpose of this cardigan is. And the pattern is called Wool Woolen Explorer Cardigan. This is the, this is the picture. And I got it from this book, Rugged Knits by Interweave. Um, by Andrea Rangel, um, published through Interweave. And the if you look at this picture, this one was actually a man's, like men's size, but then they styled it on a female and then gave notes for if you want to do the same thing, like how much positive ease you will mm. need. And I really liked that. And I wanted to get as much positive ease as I could to get close to that because I didn't have enough yarn to get, you know, the full positive ease to get the look that they had, but very close. So it called for two to four inches of positive ease for a standard fit or nine to 13 inches positive ease. And I had seven, not nine to 13 inches. I had seven inches of positive ease. And I will say that with this cardigan, it was everything that I had never done before. <laughs> I know. Like I haven't you? done a bottom up. I've never done pockets or inset pockets like this. Um, all of the color work that I've ever done has been on a hat. Anything else? Just on a hat. A steak. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. I, and I did a collar. I did the steak. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else. The button bands, I've done a button band, but it was very different. So, I mean, really, it was everything. Everything was new and different for me. Um, but I followed the pattern exactly and trusted that it would work until I came to the button band because that's where I always see the difficulty arise. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I watched um, a tutorial and I will link that one in the description box below. Um, for the tutorial I used in calculating my pickup ratio for um, how many stitches to pick up per row. And then I did for the steak, I did a crochet, um, what is it? Reinforcement. Yeah, reinforce. I reinforced it with the crochet method and then steaked it. 
and then realized that the crochet method, which was really simple, did not really secure where the floats were in the color work section. And so I went back and you can't see it because of my finished work, but I went back finisher. after where I had done the steak and trimmed it and I just used my sewing machine and sewed down it. I was going to do my sewing machine initially, but um, on this fold over collar, you weren't supposed to fold it over until the end. I missed that and I folded it over before I cut the steak. Mm -hmm. So I had to make sure things lined up perfectly. So I had to do it, you know, front to back. I couldn't cut straight through all the layers. And then if you see on my steak, I covered it with a grow grain ribbon. I used just this um, 5 eighths inch navy blue that just covered it just right and I just stitched down the edges and you really can't see it through the front and then my buttons I still need two I'm short two this one is messed up I need to go get another pack of these I had apparently I can't count past seven so <laughs> eight. eight I can't count past eight wait nine <laughs> how many did I need actually I think I needed ten and I bought nine and couldn't use this one so I have to go get two more mm. and I sewed them on I separated my yarn into plies and used that to sew my buttons on so I'm going to put post some pictures up here of it uh, it looks so cardigan. beautiful on you and like with your hair it matches so perfectly with your hair. It is hair. kind of weird that lately I've noticed that everything that like my lipstick matches my hair, my clothing matches my hair, everything matches. Not on purpose. I guess I just really like that color. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. So it's a beautiful beautiful sweater and it's beautiful on you. I love it. And the amount of yarn. Let's see. This is all the yarn. This is the yarn that I had left. So not enough to really do, you know, to go up to the next size. I have lots of this. So mm -hmm. I can do a hat or something Fine. with this. But this was a Madeline Tosh. Um, all of these were one of a kind colorways, non-repeatable, that my husband bought for me at a place called NPS, which is like an industrial warehouse of randomness. And he found them for me there. So <laughs> Super great find. No kidding. So that is finished yay That's took me wonderful. six months so when you watch emily and you're like wow you knit that in like two weeks and then you see me and you're like oh that's a little bit more yes but that's <laughs> because you were just doing a lot of other things in the time and you knit a lot of other stuff too it wasn't like it just takes you six months and if it did so what yeah at the actually, end you have a sweater because <laughs> what i wanted is i wanted this for my camping glamping season which starts soon so it's ready in time i am proud of my color work i'm just gonna say i was definitely. really worried that it was going to be all puckery it's a little bit too loose um i i think i would prefer that over too tight and puckered and not fitting well but it's just a little too loose so lessons learned and for next time super pretty it's done. It's beautiful. I love it. All right. Let's talk about socks. I thought you were going to say pie. So you have to forgive me because this is going to be a talk about socks and a talk about washing socks. If you don't mind. Okay. And to talk about washing. Is this like a washing cautionary socks. tale? No, it's just my own journey in the sock washing life. I don't okay. Know. First of all, I knit this pair of socks right here. <laughs> You'll see they're dirty right here, which is why we're going to be talking about washing socks. They are stained because I wore them one time. Anyway, I I just was at a point where I was in the middle of hefty projects. This is when I was sick and I kind of got to this point where I could not knit on the Whitmore sweater because well, I could, but I didn't want to get that sick association with that sweater and so you know how when you eat something when you're sick or you watch a tv show when you're sick or whatever it is and then forever after that thing is colored with that filter of you i was sick when i did my this fair lady yeah i can't eat corn dogs <laughs> corn dogs aren't that good anyway so that yeah. no, no i don't big feel loss. bad with that but <laughs> i used to love my fair lady <laughs> so i put the sweater aside and i just worked on other little things but all i felt like doing was laying there and knitting so i did a lot of knitting and crocheting and i knit these socks and i literally just 
picked up whatever already balled up bits of yarn were handy and put them into these socks. And that's why they have this extra long toe because that was how much purple I had for the two socks. I was kind of eyeballing it, but I had teensy tiny bit left on it. Um, and I did the candy floss sock cuff or a shorter, a little bit shorter one, but I did the, the cuff from the candy floss socks. I know this color is my opera dancer's daughter. And I know this heel is my in the garden. But this one, I think, is a yarn that was given to me by Nikki. My friend Nikki, who, by the way, has a super fun vlog going on right now. She's doing, um, what is it, sustainable-ish for Lent yep. vlogging right now. And it's so great. So go and pop over. You'll um, just search for, is it under Clara Pegatty or under Nikki Winterton? Do you remember? Her podcast? Yeah. I think it's Clara Pegatty, but I can't. I'll tell you in just a minute. Anyway, she sent me a care package with a bunch of um, like partial skeins um, that were all kind of in this color family. And I'll talk about more, more about that in a minute. Um, so anyway, I knit these socks and then I wore them right away. And then we were going to podcast and I thought, oh, I want to show those socks. I'm going to hurry and wash them. So I hand washed them. And most of the time lately, I have been doing um, machine washing all of my socks. And so I wasn't really thinking. I just thought, well, I'll hurry and hand wash them. And here, I'll find it. Yeah, you find it. Okay, look, in, it's in there somewhere. And um, while I was, anyway, just bringing that up, I, I just, just hand washing them to try and get it done quickly. I realized they're just not getting as clean. So I have started hand wa or machine washing all of my socks. I just kind of save them up until I get a good sized batch, which doesn't take too long in this household. Um, and then I'll do a batch and I don't dry them, but I do wash them you in don't my put them machine. In the dryer, the tumble dryer. Yes. I'm sorry. I don't put them in my tumble dryer in our dryer, but I do put them in our, our washing machine and they come so much cleaner. So, so I started doing that with my socks and yeah. discovered brands that cannot be machine yes. washed like, um, knit picks. A lot of the Felici doesn't. I, I couldn't. Uh -huh. I couldn't wash that or their had their their tweed fingering uh -huh. sock yarn that I had. Almost all of my socks are knit from indie dyed yarns. Just now, just because I have access to them, um, I, there's beautiful other yarns out there. But those somehow those indie dyed ones that I have have been washing up. Yeah, I haven't had a problem with those. Like it's yours been and others mine and, that we mm -hmm. can't really use the socks. They've felted completely. Oh felted. yeah, you have to be careful. Mine are mine are super wash. Um, so and most of them have nylon in, and so they do they do really well. And I do it on a cool wash. I do it. Um, on a gentle cycle, um, but they, they do really well. So anyway, I'm going to save these and go pop them in my washing machine next time I do a round of washing. So I have like half of my socks that I wash by hand and half that I put in the machine. Cause if I don't know, like if I can't remember <laughs> then you'll Where wash I got it by from hand. Or the content, yeah, I mm -hmm. wash it by hand. One thing I think is funny is just the sheer fact that I changed my color here, and I kind of faded them in a little bit, did some little Striping. transitioning stripes there, um, but it made this foot look just weirdly long when I was knitting it. I thought that can't be right. <laughs> I kept counting the rows because I always do mine by row count. That can't be, that just can't be right. And yet they fit great, but they just look so long to me. So there you go. That's just kind of fun. And I love that purple, this purple yarn, whatever it is that Nikki sent me. I love this one. It's so pretty. It's fun to use up the last bits. Yes, of yarn. I love that. It's very sad. I feel so good when I feel like, oh, we have no groceries in the house. There's no food, but I still managed to make like an actual meal and use up the last bits of things. Yes. I feel so satisfied <laughs> as a homemaker when I can fully use something up instead of like, oh, well, I don't need that last bit here. Like if I can find a use for them, it makes me feel very happy. <laughs> well, we were talking about that with some friends recently about the saying, use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. Yeah. 
Although I might have switched no, some of those. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> anyway, th there's something about that. And um, we talk a lot about a lot of really luxury things that we get to do here, like a Whitmore sweater, you know, knit with those yarns. We know those are luxury things, but I also love that, just like you're saying, using up the little pieces and, and finding another use for something you thought had yep, more repurposing <laughs> things. I love it. Yeah, I do. I, I always feel very. Like I said, fulfilled in in my mm -hmm. homemaking abilities. <laughs> yep. All right. I did it. I have finished another pair of socks for my husband. I actually finished these right after our last episode. These are just vanilla socks, meaning that there's not really a pattern for it. It's just plain stockinette stitch with a whatever cuff, heel, and toe you want to put in it. And I did a one by one um, cuff for 25 rounds. And then I knit from here down to here, eight inches. And then I do a slip stitch heel. And I don't even know what the heel turn, like heel flap. I don't know what this heel turn is. Like I'm sure there's a name for the specific technique. And then just a traditionally slightly rounded wedge toe. And the yarn, I think I said, was my spruce colorway. This is what I had left of it. And this was one of my last colors that I offered in my shop before it closed um, in December. And I just love these socks because they're for my husband and they're not blue and they're not gray. And he is excited about them. He keeps I'm asking awesome. me, when can I wear them? Have you recorded a podcast yet? <laughs> and I'm like, because we were going to, and I'm like, you can wear them this week. And then I'm like, sorry, you can't. But <laughs> he's excited about them. And I was saying I really love this colorway because I dyed this specifically with memories, you know, like capturing the memories from our family vacations going to stay at um, the Grand Californian in California, obviously. Um, when we'd go to Disneyland and California Adventure. And California Adventure has this this section there for explorers, you know, like uh, um, Russell from the movie Up, things like that, this area that mm -hmm. that just has such a nice, cozy feel to it. So that's, that's like, what it is. It has like. that National Parks feel. Yes. Well, and I think I mentioned this, that the last time my, all of my kids went and we were together there, we left we usually leave at disneyland like our last night and we walk down main street all nostalgic holding hands and thinking oh it was so lovely <laughs> and we decided this other time this last time that we were all together that we were going to leave um from california adventure because we go right into our hotel and we walked through that area and the lights were dim and the music was playing and i just knew that was our last time together like I just I just knew that and my daughter got married shortly after that so um, I mean like six months after that but shortly like the next day met, <laughs> met somebody and so um anyways it was just kind of a sweet memory for me that's special so and when you talk about spruce I always think of the spruces campground because we, we used to go up. yeah we used to go when we would do camp outs or even not just camp out sometimes we would uh, my grandparents would camp out and then we were we're so lucky where we are because we are surrounded by beautiful mountains that we can drive to in yeah. a very easy driving distance for an evening and so you know maybe my grandparents would be staying up there in their cute tiny little motor home and we would head up just for the evening and have dinner and all the cousins hanging mm -hmm. out and you know eating dinner and Sit around sitting around the campfire grandpa playing, playing his harmonica yes oh good memories good memories yeah good Fun stuff times. all right what's next Dan? another pair of socks and these i knit probably right after our last episode. Yeah, you were working on them then. Oh, that's right. So these were knit um, from the yarn from my um, advent from, oh. from, sorry, I got distracted because my phone rang, from Jewels of So Sweet Violet. And this yarn is Dandelion and Dogwood's yarn. And 
I wish you could see it's sparkly, but I know it's not showing up. Let's see. Thank you. Anyway, no, no sparkle. It's all sparkly. Um, so that was really fun. I got the blue advent that the jewels put together. So she had a blue kit and an, and a pink, pink kit and you got the pink. Yeah. And so everything was kind of color coded and themed through that. So that was the yarn. And I just put this little stripe here and then heels and toes in the mini skein that came with it. And, um, they definitely, again, if you could see the sparkle, it's gold sparkle. And so this, this gold with the gold sparkle in it just is really fun. Yeah. And again, same thing that Deborah said, this is just a vanilla sock. I did a two by two rib, but pretty much everything else you said as far as the type of heel turn and flap and the style of the toe are all the same. So there are those. Um, update, we didn't share. It is Clara Pegatti on oh, YouTube. Oh, yes. So yes. if you want to see her vlogs, they are really fun. Really they are. Fun. Let's see. I finished more socks. So I showed a little while ago, um, actually, I think it was on our last episode, a pair of socks that I finished for my youngest daughter, Nadia, from my Kindness is Like Sugar sock set. And that was the last colorway that I had offered. And I did shorty socks with just a little contrast um, row at the very beginning. And she has worn these like crazy. And like Emily was saying, like, like they, yeah, she's just worn them like crazy. I'm glad my kids mm -hmm. like wearing the things that I make. If they didn't wear them like crazy, I would be sad. So I'm okay with them getting worn down. But you can see the difference when they've been worn like crazy because I knit a second pair for my middle child, Ella. She really wanted some as well that were shorty socks, but she wanted to be able to tell them apart. So she wanted some sporty stripes in them. So here Those is the second pair. And you can see that it's just a little more dingy and faded. This one <laughs> after she runs around barefoot all over the place and that's okay. I'm glad that they like them. So I just did a little contrast stripe here. This is, she told me what she wanted. So I made it just how she asked. And I need to go and put in elastic, the like elastic thread that I put in shorty socks. My youngest, Nadia, she does not want the elastic in hers and um, everybody else likes to have the elastic mm -hmm. in there. So I did eight rounds of one by one ribbing and then did one round of the contrast color and went right into the heel flap and the heel turn. And then this is eight rounds of separate color. Then I did six rounds, then eight rounds, and then I did three before starting the toe. So that was more ends to weave in, but it wasn't that big of a deal. I kind of do the weaving in as you go, mm -hmm. where you kind of capture the ends as you go. I don't like that quite as much because it's not quite as tidy, I feel like, because mm, what happens is when you go and capture a thread, like you capture it under one stitch and the next one you don't, one you do, they end up slightly bigger and slightly smaller than the other. Mm. Not that big of a deal. Nobody's going to care that much. So it just, I typically will still just go and do it by hand. Um, but on this pair, I didn't. On this pair, I did it as I went, so because I knew I had a lot of ends, so that just made it pretty simple. I don't mind weaving in ends. It used to be something that I didn't enjoy, but I just doesn't bug me anymore. I just do it. Yeah. This is what I have left. I don't know. Do you have your scale? How much do I have left? I, I do have it, but it's upstairs. Shorty pairs. And I have the, you know, they didn't want contrasting cuffs, heels, or toes, so. I still have quite a bit of this one. I'm guessing I have close to 20 grams and maybe 10. So it's cute, cute, cute. I still have some more to use. Some more. Some more. You know, I just realized I don't, oh, I have one other finished object for knitting. Then, yep. Okay, so let's see it. here it is. This is my new design and it's called the Alta hat. 
and I'm not going to put it on right now, but we'll put some pictures in. So, um, it's got this cute Pico edge right here. And then some beautiful decreases. I don't know how well you can see this, but there's these ridges right here that come up and move into the decreases, these little lines. So this um, is being test knit right now. And I knit this using a skein of my classic sock. This is Bronte from my author's collection. And I held it with a skein of Romance Cloud, which is my Surrey Alpaca and Silk base. And this is in writer's block. So hold that up in front so you can see mm -hmm. what it does to the color. Yes. And so one thing you'll note, if you look at this Pico edge, the Pico edge itself is knit just with the main color with Bronte. It just gives it a little extra definition so that if it had that fuzz in there, you wouldn't quite see the Picos as much. They would kind of mm -hmm. fade out a little bit. And this is coming in two sizes and with two options for constructing this brim. One is a sewn brim. I did the sewn brim here. And one is a provisional cast on brim. So there you go. So like I said, this is with test knitters right now. And um, I'm hoping to release that by the end of March. And I will be uh, posting it on... Um, Instagram updates on Instagram, but I'll also the pattern will be on my website at yarnberry.com. So that's where that pattern will be available when it comes out. That was really fun. I've been daydreaming about this pattern for a couple of months and finally got to sit down and do it. I don't want to put it on because I don't want to do it anyway. I just don't, don't want to mess up your hair. Mess up. Because it's looking fabulous. My hair's looking good. Anyway. Normally I wear my hats kind of, this is Pulled where down. I wear my hat. So that's the hat pattern. And I think it does need a pom-pom. Well, no, I think it would be cute with a pom-pom. I chose not to put a pom-pom on this one, but one of my test knitters already finished her hat and she posted pictures of it with a big old fluffy faux fur pom-pom. Oh, it's cute as can be super fun. So that's that project. And and one thing to note is it takes, as far as I can tell, I'm checking it with my other test knitters, but for me, it took exactly half of each of those that's skeins. So I can get two out, mm -hmm. of, out of two skeins can make two hats. That's very nice. And this is the larger, the larger size, so. All right, I have to show you. For my birthday, I got a cute basket from my friend Margaret. I haven't taken the tag off because I love the tag. It's it tells me all about it. it, tells me who made it, so I'm keeping the tag on. That's fun. But this is where I keep, this is my washcloth basket. So that's what I do with this one. And it even has candy in it. <laughs> Did you open them so that they could get stale? No, I do like to age my Swedish fish. Yeah, you know? that they're better if they've been aged. Come on, open it up. Get it. <laughs> Get with um, it, Deb. <laughs> so I, after making some of the Wondrous Dish Claws by Jules So Sweet Violet for my parents, um, I, I made three for my parents. I decided it's time to get started on some more for me. So I have made one. And this is the yarn that I'm using. And I've got a nice little stash of it from a lovely friend. So I've made one and I'm, I've got these three that are going to be next. But I'm going to make it's a pretty color palette. And this is what I have left. And when I'm done, all these little ones will have to be like some crazy striped one because that would be fun, except for weaving in those ends. Yeah, that would not be fun. Because no. I do not like weaving in ends on this because it's double-sided so you have to do it from the outside you know what you should just knot them and then keep them on the inside actually that's true because there's an inside i have like a starting tail and an ending tail here that mm -hmm. you know you can't knot those together but if i'm putting these together mm -hmm. then they'd be throughout here and i would just knot them yeah because that would probably be the best option anyways for a washcloth so 
Ooh, I've got some high chew left in here too. Yes. Hey, that's a good day when you find candy. You I didn't do know you that had. when I get candy. Ooh, those are the good ones too. Yeah. The sour watermelon and sour grapefruit. The grapefruit. When my I favorite. get a bag of candy, I will take them and stash them in different places so that just like now, like yes, I have some candy. I should do that with my money. <laughs> I found a $10 bill in the washer yesterday. Ooh. Okay, here's the funny story, though. I'm like, yes, $10. And then I'm like, whose $10 bill is it? Kind of like teasing my family. And uh -huh. my husband goes, it's yours. <laughs> like, what? So apparently, I had sent him to the store for something. And he got 10 He didn't have any cash. So he grabbed a $10 bill out of my wallet. And then he left it in his pocket. And he never does that. Oh, So, so it was mine to start with. <laughs> I was so disappointed. <laughs> Thought I made a profit. <laughs> I feel like whoever does the laundry, I told my kids that. Whoever does the laundry gets all of the winnings. <laughs> well, then that so, would be Richard. I mean, it was just a fluke. I even looked in the washer. <laughs> Let's be honest. He does the laundry in our house. That's fine. All right. That's all of my finished objects. Same for me. Kay. All of my, yep, all my finished objects. All right, Emily, you want to start with works in progress with the one you're just working on sure. there? <laughs> so I cast on this sock as we started podcasting today. <laughs> I told Deborah, we always like to knit. And I know some people don't appreciate that, but if this is our time. Talking about knitting? Yes, this is our time to hang out with our sister and chat about knitting. So we're going to knit during it. And I realized I didn't have a good project that I could sit and knit because I had just finished off a bunch of smaller things. Yeah, and one of my true. projects I'm going to show you in a little bit has just gotten larger. So it would have been a little bit harder to work on. So I had these two yarns sitting next to each other, waiting for me to cast them on together. And I will be honest, I don't remember. I'm like, they're really cute. One of these was B and Rose. I think this one was B and Rose. Faye. She is not dying anymore, but she is podcasting. She's living instead. She's living her life. <laughs> she dyed this one. And I think that this is the Emily Clausen colorway because it just is like everything I love. And this one, I don't know where I got this one. I'm like, hmm. It, it might be Sweet Sparrow, but I don't know. But they just yeah. are twins. It's like they're inverse from each yeah. other. So they are going together. And I know I've used this for something, but I, I think I only put a stripe in my granny stripe blanket, maybe. I'm looking at it over there. Um, I don't know what I've used it for because it's not a lot. Anyway, so I've pulled these out and I'm going to just stripe them. So these are going to be stripey socks with these two yarns. And that's how much I've begun. So it's a baby. <laughs> Look, I made a baby. <laughs> That reminds me, okay, The Simpsons. Oh, I don't know The Simpsons. As a teenager, I remember Sundays that, that as kids, we were like, gotta watch The Simpsons when a new episode would come out. And this was together. after I was gone from the home. And I remember one episode, sister. I can't even remember any of the names of characters, but there was Ra Ralph. <laughs> Ralph, he was just telling the story about how he was like hidden in a closet in the school and he's like and then I saw I don't remember what he said you saw but he's like and then they were making a baby and one of the babies looked at me and one of the, like it was the most random thing and it's so my sense of humor I keep going back trying to find that episode just for that clip of where he's telling this made-up story of something that happened between two people I saw but well so we have this this funny. joke in our house all the time that one of my kids will say how is something made? You know, whatever it is. Like, how are Kit Kats made? And we'll always say, well, when a cookie and some chocolate love each other. You know, so we always started out with that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a running joke in our house. <laughs> what was oh. the most... Oh, never mind. I won't we don't need to get into any It's okay. We'll leave it. <laughs> we'll leave it be. Deborah, what are you working on? done okay <laughs> i'm working on a sweater <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry i can't stop <laughs> when you start laughing and you <laughs> stop <laughs> oh when claire's here if claire was with us would have snorting okay 
<clears throat> I'm working on a Whitmore sweater by Amy. Taylor S. Studios. She's lovely. This one has bishop sleeves. I'm going to be, I'm following this pattern exactly. Exactly as written, bishop sleeves and all. Gaina from Tales from Cuckoo Land. She mm -hmm. was knitting the bishop sleeves and decided she liked how they were like a bell and didn't want to add the cuff, so she didn't add the cuff. Looks lovely. They're beautiful bell sleeves. Yep. She um, needs some go-go boots with them, though. <laughs> so, this is the sweater Aww. this is for my daughter sorry i'm gonna stick this right in your face <laughs> no it, the problem was it's just a piece of fuzz came over and was like floating across <laughs> and i'm on the ribbing right now oh so cute so got some ribbing to go um this was just pretty darn simple to follow the pattern if you, if you buy this pattern and you look at it and you see how many pages there are and you're flipping through and you're like, okay, this is going to be intense. It's actually so lovely because she's broken everything down mm -hmm. so simply that it makes it really, really easy to follow. And even though there's a lot of pages, it's because she's broken it down size by size by size to make it easier for everybody to follow rather than mm -hmm. having to sort out through you know, a chart for your one specific size or, you know, things like that. So it's, it's great. It's very simple, very straightforward. So I've had no problems with it and it is from the top down and beautiful I love lace, it. Yo. Love it. So as soon as I finish that, I'm going to be doing the sleeves. And this is for Nadia, right? This one. So initially it was going to be for both of my girls. They were the same size and I was just going to knit one. But when we were deciding on the color to do, they couldn't really agree. They both liked this one, but Ella preferred another one. So I thought, if I can do this one and knock it out quickly, I'll start on another one for Ella. Otherwise, it's one for both. There you go. <laughs> but they'd be happiest if they each have their own. Um, so what I... Let me show you what I was doing to decide on colors. Um, they were showing me colors that they liked and so then I would go and dye up a mini to try and get that and we just tried several different minis and look. That's super cute. <laughs> so I actually didn't dye all of these but I did maybe half of these trying to find what color that they wanted and this is what Ella wants. She wants this one. Oh that's lovely. So this is the one that I'm knitting. Nope. This is the one I'm knitting with just slightly lighter. Um, Nadia just wanted it more pale that I'm knitting with now. And this is the one Ella wants. So um, I will hopefully be knitting a second one. But this was really fun because when I was dyeing those, it reminded me of a scene from Mary Poppins Returns that I wanted to do um, like some colorways from. And so I went through and dyed some of the other colors that went with it really well. So I have kind of this stash of minis to do something fun with. But the scene was from where they're taking a bath and where she says it's time for a good clean scrub. So that's mm. what these are. <laughs> so fun. Okay, you gotta move this. And it's in, this is the <clears throat> first project bag that I made for myself. A big one with hexies. So And you made me a coordinating one with your leftovers. Yep. And you gave it to me for my birthday and I still have it. And I use First it. ones. First so project bags. Fun. One of my favorite things about knitting is using all the things that have memories. Yes. Or connections to friends, you know. Like Pulling out yarn that was a gift from a friend and knitting a pattern designed by another friend and having it in a project bag made by my sister. You know what I mean? Like the all these markers. things. Yes. The, yeah. yeah. So I love that. And that's kind of my, my favorite thing in my room. In fact, if you look back here on my windowsill, I've got all these little treasures that came from people like Deborah gave me this teapot and that little candle holder was made by Gaina. I think we were talking about this before. No, I put it, I put it on my stories. Oh, okay, that's I put right. Some things. Anyway, there's just a bunch of things on there, and I just think 
I hid this one, Margaret. Sorry, because I didn't want it to be click clacking and driving everybody crazy. <laughs> I love my little so cupids. I hid it, but but she has this A little <laughs> dancing cupid. <laughs> yeah, so fun. Anyway, so just things like that. That's one of my favorite things. So not only is it the actual knitting or the actual making of whatever kind, but it's all of the connections mm -hmm. with it. All right, work in progress. Next one. Don't knock the camera. Don't knock the camera. I'm gonna do my. Did I do it? Did I knock no. it? No. Oh, no, okay. it was just close because everything's resting on it. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna bring this this fella over here. This is gonna be impossible to show you because it's just big now. But this is my granny stripe blanket that I am working on. I have it folded in half widthwise right now, just so I can show you. And since I showed it last, I have knit or crocheted this much on it, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 stripes. And I have 13 to go. So I've got about this much left to go until I finish it. But here it is. I love this blanket. I love it so much. It is the exact perfect weight for me. It's not too heavy. It's so cozy. I'm already snuggling up with it when I'm cold. Yeah, because it's like, it's Ooh, a good size. It's so dreamy and bright and fun. And it's perfect because it takes almost exactly 20 grams to go down and back two times on this blanket. Um, I have had three or four different times where the the yarn that I'm using, the 20 gram mini I am using, has been a little shy. So this was one of them. You can see right here, I put that much of one row, I put another yarn in. And then this one, I put two little clusters in, mm -hmm. you know, very, just occasionally right here. This one had this many clusters. Um, I'll just pick up because I have all these little tiny scraps. And so I'll just find something that's kind of generally in the same value without trying to super match it. And then I put it in. But uh, most of the time, I have a little bit of leftovers. Anyway, so that's this one's your one of yours. Isn't this Sugar Rush? Yep. That's one of hers. And there's a whole bunch of yours in here. Um, I think that one's yours. Anyway, mm -hmm. there's a ton of them. But I just love this blanket so much. So I've had a lot of people ask me about it. Um, I am using a three. Dang it. What is it? Can you actually grab that? I'm can you get up there? To. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's all right. Everything's I think it's a 3.25 <laughs> millimeter hook. And um, I did a foundation chain of 249 crochet chains and that's how big I'm making it um and yeah like I said I go down and back two times so there's actually four rows of each color and it's almost like I said almost exactly 20 grams so anyway love it getting close to having it done I'm I'm gonna be so sad actually when I finish working on this one because I've just really, really enjoyed it. I love finding another mini to put into it. Do you know what one you're using next? Well, I have some already balled up, but I just and kind of pick. They, It'll be there in that bag that I was just oh, talking about. Oh, over there. Actually, so no, it's, there's a, see your, your bundle over there. Uh -huh. That was, is that not your summer? That one is from the, I can't see that. It's got watermelon oh, and butter. No, popcorn. that one is from the, um, County Fair? Yes, County Fair. I wanted to Concession. say Carousel. Was it Concessions? Or yeah, was it, okay. that one's a Concessions. So that bundle of minis is getting wound up next to probably go into it. That's so fun, though. I love oh, it. Oh, that's why I can't see. I put my glasses down here. You're like, why can't I see? I'm like, I can't see what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. Oh, I need to get new contacts so I can wear my glasses, but they give me a headache. My eyesight is not bad enough that I can't function without them up close and just doing my day-to-day, -day, everyday, you know, things. 
I can't drive without them, mm -hmm. watch TV without them, but I get a headache having things touch my face. So I take them off whenever I can. <laughs> the big sister in me just so wanted to poke you just then, but I am 45 years old. So I did control myself because I was just gonna be like, when things touch your face, oh, you know I'm what like, I mean? Why did you want to poke me? Am I in trouble? No, okay. just... Just to be annoying? Yes, I, I because it's just a habit of a lifetime. <laughs> And then when I'm blamed for everything that goes wrong, but you see, she is actually the instigator. <laughs> I claim no responsibility. She just claimed it. <laughs> just now. She just said, you are my witness. It's on. Everybody has seen it on me. Okay. I am making a bath mat. <laughs> That's cool. Why am I making a bath mat, you ask? It's because I'm a glamper and in our little motor home, it's a small space and we need a little mat and nothing is the right size. So I decided, well, I know how to make things. So I went to Hobby Lobby and grabbed three of their um, skeins of I Love This Cotton. And this one is spunky. 220 spunky and then this one is 308 pewter and this one is 68 aqua this one has little flecks of the other two colors in it so mm -hmm. i am crocheting a mat and because i have a specific this size is okay. this is my size that i need and it's like narrow and long like it doesn't have to be very big so um i'm doing a some puff stitch puff stitch i don't remember but i will put a link to the video the tutorial that i followed that i followed for this down below and it's reversible and it looks kind of like well maybe it doesn't my gauge is a lot looser than it should be because i honestly had no idea didn't say you know i didn't know what size hook i needed how many to cast on i honestly guessed and I got spot on with my width, <laughs> luckily, but it is a little bit more open in here, but it's supposed to look kind of like it's braided. But like, when it like washes, braids. it will probably puff it, up a yeah, little Yeah, I think it will. I think it will close up a bit. So it'll end up being a little bit smaller, but that still will be fine. So I need to do um, three of each, like this repeat, and then one more of the dark gray of the pewter on the ends and then I might put some sort of backing on it but I don't know like just a so one slide yeah. yeah so gotta have gotta be fancy I think it's cute as can be so I was thinking oh well let's see maybe I could weave something maybe I could I'm like just crochet something that's fast so <laughs> that's great so I will put the link below now I kind of think I have to do one for my bathroom yeah that would be a lot more work and I am too lazy to do something because <laughs> the crochet this is it definitely hurts my elbow I can only do like two of these stripes every couple of days so I haven't done much because it really makes my elbow sore I don't know why I'm obviously doing something wrong I know but that's okay you're doing it wrong that's what I always got told about crochet when I was younger until I realized but I'm crocheting so what's yeah. the problem well and I didn't crochet for a long time because I was sitting there crocheting next to somebody who did it all the time and they looked at me and they're like what are you doing because I grabbed it a different way yeah like it's still and I didn't my aunt she was just that's so upset that I didn't hold the the hook the right way I hold my hook you know, like I would hold a pencil instead of holding it like this. I hold it like this. That's how I hold mine too. And so and then I swivel it. So I tried and tried and tried to hold it this way and I could not ever do it efficiently. And I just I'm like, fine, I won't crochet because I'm doing it wrong. And then I got over that. Decided I just decided not to crochet around her, but then I crocheted anyway. that. But she still like, taught me. Okay. She's still the one who taught me to crochet. So speaking of crochet, here's another crochet project. <gasps> Ooh, Emily. So, I haven't seen story. this one. You have seen this before in a different state. This is called the Between Meal Centerpieces. Oh, it's in yes. progress. Um, when it's done, it will be that big. Yeah. Um, I made one of these 
Yes, long time ago. In fact, in 2012, I made it and I had it on my table for years. And then a certain child of mine in a fit of peak, we shall say, because apparently it's now Jane Eyre today in my conversation. <laughs> she was annoyed with me and she was probably, I don't know, five or something. And she took scissors to it and she destroyed it. And then she died, and that's why you can't say her name. <laughs> she died. No. And then she grew up, and she felt really bad. Anyway, but I have wanted to make another one for a long time, but I was still had shell shock from the first one. And so I'm finally doing it. Here it is. It's like Joe from along. Little Women and her manuscript. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Amy. <laughs> How dare she? That just hurts my heart. It is a very great loss, Joe. Anyway, so here I am working on this. And this is about a third of the way in, just because the rows turn to get, you know, they're longer and longer as we go. It's so pretty. This is a vintage pattern from, I think, 1912 or 1914. It's free. Um, you can find it by just Googling between meal centerpiece crochet. And you can find the pattern to download for free. It was in a Corticelli, I believe, is the name of the little pattern book. And it has a bunch of different um, little crochet projects, very vintage. Some of them are like how to do like crocheting fancy borders around embroidered things. And anyway, there's some, some other things. But this is called the Between Meal Centerpiece. And um, I'm just going along. One thing to note is that you need to look at the picture whenever because it doesn't have any charting it's all written out row by row or round by round and make sure you're referring back to the picture to make sure that the center piece out to these petals looks right if you ever decide to make this so anyway there you go what are you using i am using um i think this is aunt lydia's crochet cotton it's a size 10 crochet cotton, mercerized cotton, and this is a 2.0 millimeter hook. And I will be honest, this is a little bit larger. It calls for a 1.8 or it's some kind of a, a size that you really don't find anymore. Um, and it's, it's a non-standard size. So I sized up to the 2.0. I think that it would be ideal to do it with a slightly smaller hook, but my hands can't do it with a slightly smaller hook. So if you look, you can see the loops in my mm -hmm. chains are a little loose compared to what is ideal. But I'm okay with that. I can live with that because I'd rather make it and have it not be perfect than not make it at all. So... That's what I'm using. And I have this really fun faux peridot teardrop little marker on it that I think is very elegant. I love it. I think that's all my crochet. I had, I've been doing a little more crochet lately. That's all of my works in progress. I have been like whittled things down. All I have is my sweater and that rug. I have, I have one, yeah, one more. Like this morning and last night, I had to stop myself from casting things on. Like, oh, good, I'm gonna cast on all these things. But I'm, no, I, I really am enjoying this one. I want to get the sweater done. I yeah. Get the, you know, so I'm going to wait and not have forty okay. things distract me. And because I really have liked, like, for the last couple of years, I've worked really hard on keeping minimal projects and just enjoying what I'm working on rather than mm -hmm. always just looking forward to the next one but enjoying the process of what I'm working on so mm -hmm. and I really have this one oh, it's been so so lovely I have really liked just every yeah kind of savoring it, it yes. and not getting caught up in yeah. the next the next the even next. though I'm like oh I really want to get through it because I want to start the next one too but I'm mm -hmm. also just loving the prog process of it yeah I have I actually have two more I like oh, yes. so this is yes. this is um you've seen me show this before but this yep. is the terrace wrap by pearl soho and I've just made a I've probably made about this much progress since I showed it last time 
So this is Very where I am. Pretty. But it is, it's going to open up a, quite a bit when I block it. It'll, it'll get a lot more just open and drapey when it gets blocked. This really pale blushy color. This is Opera Dancer's Daughter, which was my very first colorway that turned out the way I wanted it to. I had dyed with before, but this is the first one where I dyed it and I went, that's exactly what I want. And it has continued to be one of my most popular colors. So anyway. Okay, wait, I wanna compare colors. Yep. So this is a lighter, it's still in a peachy tone. This one has a little bit more pink in it. This one's a little um, this actually, cooler. This one actually has some purpley yeah, colors that yeah. I've put in with it. Yeah. And this one has some little flecks of browns and um, mauves that are, that are in it. So I love when that happens when you're dyeing something and mm -hmm. it turns out exactly how you had envisioned. Like, yes, and by the way, I have had people it. ask me, what does Opera Dancer's Daughter refer to? Because it's from my Jane Eyre collection. So Adele, who is the ward of Mr. Rochester, is the Opera Dancer's Daughter. Her mother was an opera dancer. So that's what he says. She's the daughter of an opera dancer, Celine Varons. Anyway, so there you go. That one's coming along. I still have, I'm, I'm about halfway. It's got a long way to go, but I'm just going to keep working on it and it's going to block out just gorgeous. I know because I've seen this finished. Um, one note, Pearl Soho free pattern, but it the Pearl Soho pattern calls for a US size four needle and I am knitting this with a six, which is a 4.0 millimeter. Um, I like because I there was another lady who knit who knit um, this as a shop sample with this colorway for Knit and mm -hmm. Pretty. And that's what my inspiration, I mean, it's not even inspiration. I'm just plain up copying, copying. her. Um, but she did, she's <laughs> so good at looking at things like that and going, that's pretty, but I bet it would be better at a different gauge, you know? Mm -hmm. So she knit it at that larger gauge and it's just dreamy. It's fabulous. So that is what I am working on there. And I have one more. Okay which is so crazy and fun. Oh, and by the way, look at this bag. I have shown this bag before. It's the glitziest bag ever from Amy. Mine is filled with my next project that I almost cast on this morning. Love it. I had to so. talk myself down off the ledge. Talk it. <laughs> okay, here's another really fun bag. I've shown this one before, I believe. Mm -hmm. This one is was just from a dear friend as a Christmas present. Isn't that fun? I never got my Hogwarts letter, so I'm leaving the Shire to become a Jedi. <laughs> never received my acceptance letter to Hogwarts. Anyway, and it looks like Molly Weasley bag, doesn't it? Anyway, so again, um, <clears throat> being sick and sitting here in my sewing room, because this is what I did a lot. I'd sit here in my, I have a rocking chair over here in the corner, and I have a TV up there. And so I would come down here and sit in front of my space heater with my blanket and whatever I was working on and watch TV and go, uh. It's like, if you're gonna be sick, Gross. that's the ideal way that to do it. That was the way to do it. So I just spent a lot of time in here and right next to my chair is a big basket and my shelf that has all of my partial skeins kind of crammed in there and fingering weight yarns. Mm -hmm. And so I kept pulling it out and just like staring at the basket. And then I started pulling yarns out and just throwing them in this bag. And I put a whole bunch of them in there and then I cast on a sweater. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? It's so crazy. I love it. It'll match what you're wearing right now. <laughs> Speaking of Molly Weasley, I feel like this is something Molly Weasley would appreciate, don't you think? <laughs> it's great. I mean, maybe it's a little too pastel for her, but. So this is my Sweater I am knitting using partial skeins. I like how you're calling that pastel. I think most people would not call that pastel. Well, okay. To your... <laughs> if you were to take out this section right here, like if you were to look at just that, would you call that pastel? Yeah, that's that's more soft. And would you tones. call this bottom section? Yeah, it's just this bright section right here that kind of maybe doesn't even quite fit, but oh well. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this is what I'm knitting. And um, I have about 
four, three inches until I need to do the ribbing at the bottom. I'm planning on doing all of the ribbing, the button bands and the cuffs on the sleeves all in one of my author's colors, but I don't know which one oh, yet. I was just gonna say which it one. might, I don't know. I have to go and play. <laughs> Good luck to me. Maybe it'll just be in an undyed. That's probably going to be the best, but we'll see. Um, but I have to decide fairly soon. Come on, if you're making it crazy. Well, I want it to be crazy, but I don't color. want it to be horribly distasteful. Does that make sense? There needs to be something. Sense of order. To, to like I, yeah, to kind of bring it all together. At well, the no, end. I'm saying have it be all the same one, but not undyed. Like give it a color. Well, if I can find a color that I like with, with it, then I will. I just yeah. haven't done that yet. Yeah. I think that it doesn't look as pretty on the screen as it does when I look at it here. Yeah, because it is. Because when it's I look at it here, it does look cohesive. When I look at it here, I'm like, oh, I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> but you know what? That's oh, why well. I try not to look at it myself. No, I'm just kidding. The great just thing kidding. is, is that these are skeins that were just languishing. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them were not very big pieces, you know. And so it's fun to just be able to use them. It's like we were talking about yep. earlier. So anyway, yep, that's that's happening I for the look. for the pattern. This is the same pattern that I ended up using for my lime green sweater, which is Wishes by Hohi Locatelli. No, nope. Sparkle Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli, but removing all of the texture because it's an all over like texture pattern just doing stocking up. and then tweaked from there I changed the armholes I didn't want big gapy upper arms so I reduced the number of stitches that were cast on underneath and then I made it slightly a line so it's kind of a hodgepodge but the actual construction of the sleeves and the construction of it and like the numbers I started with for casting on and so on all came from that pattern by Hohi Locatelli. <clears throat> that is, uh, anyway, well, I was going to show you. Do you have more colors in there? I've Let's got, see. I've got, that. I could knit two more sweaters with the amount I have in here. I've got all of these in here. This is the one I'm working with right now. Got all of these. Anyway, so there's more. There's more. Just a couple. There's more where these came from. <laughs> All right. Check them in there. Thanks. I know I need a stash buster project so that I can use up all of my treasured leftovers. Because they are treasured, which is why I haven't used them. But mm -hmm. I do. I want to use them and not just use a little bit. I want to use a lot. So it seems yeah. like a blanket or sweater or, you know. So I'm thinking, I'm contemplating doing a blanket like you did. I love I, that granny stripe blanket. And I did do a whole thing on my stories about it when I was sick because I was bored and I was sitting there and I wanted to talk to somebody and it was fun. And I did have a lot of people ask questions and so on. So um, hopefully there's some more being born out there in the world. I'm sure there are. <laughs> okay, well, it is time for our Kindness is Like Sugar segment. I'm really excited to be sharing a little kindness is like sugar segment with you today. I was trying to think what I wanted to share. And there is one lady who came to mind. I have a friend named Jan and Jan is one of my favorite people in the world. If anybody even says her name, my immediate thought is, Oh, I love her. Just, I just love her so much. There are some people that I feel are extra close to heaven and she is one of them. So I'm going to tell you just a little bit about her. Jan has um, a lot of health problems and she, um, she can't eat hardly anything um, because her body can't digest almost anything. And she is very, very frail and she suffers a lot because of this. And yet she is 
always smiling. And I know we hear about people like that and we think, but are they really always smiling? No, I'm sure she isn't always, but anytime she's around a person, she is. She has a smile and it's not just because she's faking it, it's because she loves people so much that when she's with them, they she just feels joy. Um, she She's not married and she lives alone and yet she spends so much of her time looking out for others. So she lives in a nearby retirement community and there are there is another lady that lives on another floor in this same building who is going blind. And Jan goes over there at least a couple of times a week and reads to this sweet lady and just talks to her and visits with her. She is not somebody who can physically do a lot to help somebody else because her own health is so bad. And so she is still finding ways to lift somebody else's burden and going and reading to this other friend, this, this friend of her, um, of hers. And, um, she is somebody who anytime I'm around her, she makes me feel like I am the most important person that she's ever talked to. And she does that to anybody who talks to her. And so I had a conversation with her a couple of months ago where she said, I used to be able to do so much to help other people and I loved it. And now I can't do anything. And it makes me so sad. And I feel like like all of the things that I wanted to do in my life have been taken away because I am, I'm not well. And it makes me feel like I don't have a purpose. And I was astonished that she said that because she is the first person I would think of as somebody who lifts other people's burdens, you mm -hmm. know? So we had a really long talk about that. And I just expressed my love to her. And, and oh, anyway, there, there are some people that you meet in this life and you think they are close to heaven. <laughs> they are angels on this earth. And that's how, how Jan is. So I just thought of that because if I think, if I'm feeling sorry for myself and I think, oh, I just want to, I don't want to go and help somebody or I don't want to go and do that or, or I'm feeling kind of, what's the word, wrapped up in my own mm -hmm. self. I, it's so Jan is somebody I think of, and I think, look at what she can do. She She's look what she can do. I can do just that much more. I can make somebody else happy just that much more. If Jan can do it, I can do it. And um, oh, it I is just so her. great to surround yourself with people that remind you of what you're capable mm -hmm. of. That is mm -hmm. that is great. The very first time I met Jan, I met her about. Um, little over a year ago and she was somebody who you could see it in her face instantly now the thing about jan is that i don't know how long she's going to be with us um, because of her health and she you can literally see her just she's just being carved away you know mm. she's just diminishing physically um but the oh, okay calm suck it in the the <clears throat> The more that her physical body is deteriorating, the brighter she's shining. And the more her spirit is just coming out and, <clears throat> and touching everybody that she talks to. And I really admire her and I just love her and I aspire to be like Jan. She's one of my heroes. So I wanted to share her with you. Love amazing love people like that. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Okay. Suck it in. We're gonna end with some shop news, Emily. Some shop news, yay! So I have um, all of my authors' colorways are are in the shop. I also have some fun. I still have some of my Pride and Prejudice colorways. So I have, I forgot to grab one. I'm going to see, oh, well, can we put another picture in? I have to ask Deborah's permission because I'm volunteering her labor. We're going to put another picture. So this picture is of Kitty and Lydia. This is my last of my shakes or of my Pride and Prejudice colorways. Um, at least for now, I'm sure I will come up with more later. Um, I love this one because Kitty and Lydia were, you know, obviously the most giggly and ridiculous of the sisters. 
And yet, if I was a teenager, I like when I was a teenager, basically, I would have been them. Let's just say it right out. <laughs> so especially Kitty, I would have just been the most, the most um, ridiculous, but not quite crossing the line. <laughs> so I love I love them. So that one's really fun. That one's in the shop. I also still have um, I think at least a grounds of a couple of grounds at Pemberley sets and some dance at the assembly rooms sets. I've also put my Emma collection in the shop and I brought just three of them down here to show you. So this is Miss Woodhouse, which is gold and pinks. I love that one. So fun. This is the Elton's. You know, they're competing. Have, have you any, have you seen the new Emma? Did you go see it I yet? I went and saw it last night. I haven't seen it yet. Did you like it? I don't, I don't want to give my personal feedback here to taint anybody else's. <laughs> so opinions. in other words, you didn't like it. Okay. <laughs> I have, I have mixed feelings. You have mixed feelings. <laughs> I need to see it. I'm still a huge fan of the Gwyneth Paltrow version. Anyway, this is Elegant Jane Fairfax. One of my favorite lines from the book and from the movie, when pressed, I say she's elegant. Anyway, so that one is, these are three. I just brought these down because I'm shipping these out to somebody today and I thought they were fun to share. Anyway, so I've got, there's also My Mr. Knightley and Harriet Smith are the other two colorways in that collection. They are all available in the shop right now. So yeah, come on over and visit. Um, I have, I'm having a, Spring is coming sale. Everything in the shop is 10% off if you spend $25 or more. And that's going on um, probably until the, I'm trying, no, until the 10th, until March 10th. All right. March 10th, what's today? Today is the 6th, so it's just a few more days. Okay. It usually takes me a day to get this up. And then seven days for you to watch. I'm just kidding. When yep. it's that long, you have to watch it in increments. And by the time we get to the end, it's gone. Well, the yards will still be there, even if the sale is over. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. It's been a while since we were here. I don't know how long it will be before we are back again. But don't forget us. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe and we love thumbs up. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.